Okay. Very good morning, class 12th. Today I'll be talking about the titration of KMnO4 versus oxalic acid and we are going to refer to the calculation part of it. Okay. Now before we go to the calculation part, we need to know what is the reaction taking place because your formulas are derived from the reactions. Your KMnO4 changes into Mn2 plus during this titration because you are using a highly acidic medium by using one test tube full dilute sulfuric acid per titration. Balancing this, oxygens are balanced by water. You have four oxygens, so four water. Hydrogens are balanced by H plus since you are using an acidic medium. There are eight hydrogens, so eight H plus. Coming to the charge part, eight H plus, that is eight positives and one negative makes it seven positive on this side while on this side you only have two positive to balance it out i add five electrons here so i have two positive on both the ends coming to the oxalic acid the reactive part in the oxalic acid is the oxalate ions these oxalate ions transform into co2 during the titration before i balance the oxygen and hydrogen you need to balance all other atoms the other atom is carbon how many carbons do i have two so there is only one, so I put a 2 here. Coming to oxygen. How many oxygens? 4. How many here? 4. So it's balanced. Is there any hydrogen on any side? None. So there is no need to balance the hydrogens. Coming to the charge. 2 minus and there is no charge here. So you add the 2 electrons to balance the charge. Now, while writing the net equation, you are required to cancel out the electrons. The electrons cannot be cancelled because you have 2 electrons here and 5 here. So you multiply this equation by 2 to make the electrons 10. Multiply this equation by 5 to make the electrons 10. Once done, your electrons will definitely be cancelled. Rest everything here is to be multiplied by 2. Rest everything here is to be multiplied by 5. So since I write this first, I have 5 times oxalate giving me 10 carbon dioxide molecules. Multiplying all this twice, I have 2 times MnO4 minus and I have 16 H positive by multiplying this by 2 and I have here you have 2 times Mn2 positive and you have 8 water molecules. This is the net reaction that you should know for your titration of oxalic acid versus Mohor salt. Now this titration takes place between 60 to 70 degrees C which should be mentioned on the arrow because you heat during this particular titration. Heating also helps you to change CO2 gas goes out of the system in the titration hence the reaction leads to a forward direction. Only initial heating is required you do not require a continuous heating the reason is this. This acts as an auto catalyst. So once generated once your reaction starts off then it continues till the end. So you do not require a continuous heating in the process. Now coming to the formula used. The formula is moles of KMnO4 upon moles of oxalic acid. Now let's find in the equation. How many moles of oxalic acid? 5 moles. How many moles of Mohor salt? Sorry, how many moles of KMnO4? 2 moles. So the moles of KMnO4 is equal to 2. Moles of oxalic acid is equal to 5. So the ratio between the moles of the two reacting identity is the purpose of the reaction. So the ratio of moles of KMnO4 to that of oxalic acid is this. Hence your formula becomes 5 times moles of KMnO4 which we will write in terms of molarity and volume is equal to 2 times the moles of oxalic. So the final formula that we end up in is 5 times molarity of KMnO4, volume of KMnO4 because moles is nothing but molarity into volume is equal to 2 times moles of oxalic acid. The moles of oxalic acid would also be written in terms of molarity into volume. So you have molarity of oxalic acid into volume of oxalic acid. That's the formula we use for all titrations of KMnO4 versus oxalic acid. The moles is nothing but molarity into volume is something which you should know 
because if you remember class 11th it started with molarity is given by number of moles upon volume in solution so you have the number of moles would always be equal to molarity into volume so you have molarity into volume for KMnO4 into 5 is equal to molarity into volume of oxalic acid into 2 that's your formula for all titration calculations where you have titration of KMnO4 versus oxalic acid I'll take an example for this in this case you need to determine molarity and the strength of KMnO4 and you are provided with a self you have to titrate it with a self prepared which means one solution is to be prepared yourself standard solution of oxalic acid <coughs> we call it standard because its strength is known to you how do you prepare it you are asked to prepare a hundred ml solution of oxalic acid the molarity of the solution is provided to you as m by 40 now this 100 ml is because the vessel in your lab is of 100 ml. This vessel what I am talking about is a measuring flask which looks something like this. And there is a cut mark here because you have to fill it up to this level. So to do this prepare this solution you have if you have a 100 ml flask there are schools which also have a 250 ml flask so you work accordingly. Coming to the weight calculation. The weight calculation is on the basis of the formula molarity is equal to moles of oxalic divided by the volume of solution in liters. Now I'll rewrite it up. Molarity is equal to the moles of oxalic. Moles of oxalic would be weight of oxalic upon the molar mass of oxalic. And you have the volume of solution to be taken in liters. Substituting the values here, I end up in. Molarity given to you is how much? I'll you switch on this side. Molarity given to you is how much? Um, that's it. M by 40. So you have 1 by 40 is equal to. Weight of oxalic acid is what you have to calculate always. Divided by the molecular mass of oxalic acid. This is the catchy part. This molecular mass of oxalic acid would be determined from its formula. The formula of oxalic acid is this, but you tend to forget the 2H2O. So your mass calculation will be an error. If you do not add the 2H2O, you need to incorporate this to give you a 126 U of the value. Substituting the 126 here, volume of the solution to be used is 100 ml. And for 100 ml it has to be in liters. So you multiply it by 100 and you also have a 1000 on top. Substituting these values you would get the weight of oxalic acid. So your weight of oxalic acid comes out to be 1 by 40. Your 126 goes into the numerator into you have a 100 above, a 1000 below. And if you calculate it the value that comes out to be is 0 0.315 grams is what you need to weigh to prepare the solution. For preparing the solution, you would first of all weigh this much amount of oxalic acid, introduce it into your measuring flask. This is always to be done by means of a funnel. Once you add this oxalic acid into the funnel, then you need to add water so that you reach this particular level which is marked and that prepares your solution for oxalic acid to be used for titration. Coming to the calculation part of the titration. As we had derived the formula, we move on to the calculation part of the titration. The calculation part of the titration involves molarity of KMnO4, volume of KMnO4 and molarity of oxalic, volume of oxalic and there is also a factor of 5 here and a factor of to here. This is the formula that you are going to use for all calculations. While substituting the values, everything you have to do is from the question provided to you. The question provided to you was you had to determine molarity and the strength of more salt. It would always be more salt. Just a quick reminder, you have to determine molarity and strength of KMnO4. It is always KMnO4 in class 12th. 
by titrating it against your prepared oxalic acid solution whose molarity given is m by 40 the volume that you've prepared is 100 ml but per titration you'll be using only 10 ml that's the pipette size that we have you could also have a 20 or 25 which varies from school to school so you accordingly will put the values down so your molarity of oxalic acid as given to you is 1 by 40 the volume of oxalic acid would be from the pipette which could be 10 ml it could be 20 ml could be 25 depending from school to school this is your 2 the factor from the number of moles is equal to volume of KMnO4 now where is the KMnO4 the KMnO4 is in the burette so you would take at least three readings and you will come to a concordant reading which you are going to use this concordant reading is around 10 generally that is around the volume of oxalic acid that you've used molarity of KMnO4 is always to be determined you are never given the molarity of KMnO4 because it is a secondary standard this would always be asked out of you and you have this 5 here so your values will be 5 into the molarity of KMnO4 which is to be determined into the concordant reading which you will do it after three titrations at least is equal to 2 into the molarity of oxalic acid which will be provided they could vary this so do not learn up the formula into the volume of oxalic acid which would be 10 depending on your pipette. So once you are done with this you would have your value of molarity of KMnO4. Please put it at least up to three decimal places and do not round it off. Please also substitute the suffix as M referring to the molarity. Now you also have to calculate the strength. For the calculation of strength, you require the formula for strength is strength is always for KMnO4 will always be equal to the molarity of KMnO4 into the molar mass of KMnO4. Jiska bhi strength nikalna hota hai, usi ki molarity aur usi ka molar mass. So, since for 12th class you have always to calculate the strength of KMnO4. Molarity of KMnO4 will be from your titration done which as I had said would be 0, 0.0 dash 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 whatever it is please do not round it off. Multiplied by molecular mass sorry the molar mass of KMnO4. The molar mass of KMnO4 is 158. After adding on the masses of K, Mn and 4 times oxygen. Now coming to the units of this. Now this molarity of when we talk about the units of strength then the molarity of KMnO4 will be moles per liter while the molar mass is always grams per moles. Therefore your unit would always end up in grams per liter. So your answer whatever it is you need to report the units as grams per liter. In some schools, there is something called as percentage purity which is also asked. Now, if you are asked for the percentage purity, it is for KMnO4 in class 12th. The formula for percentage purity is your calculated strength which we just did upon a given strength. Now, this given strength value would be then provided in a question if you cannot identify the value would have the units as grams per liter for your identification while this calculated strength we had just done just before this i had explained how to get that calculated strength and then you multiply it by 100 both calculated strength and given strength would be in grams per liter so it would have only a percentage as the answer there won't be any units in this particular part so I hope you all would easily be doing your calculations for the boards when you are asked to get the titration of oxalic acid versus mohosol. All the best for your board exams.